welcome back to the channel my youtube family as you all know we shoot a lot of real estate videos here on the channel so once in a while we compare several real estate properties in a fun and detailed manner in today's episode we'll be comparing what one million dollars would buy you in abuja nigeria and what the same amount would buy you in accra ghana this comparison would be a tough one because both uh, countries or developers did a great job with the finishing and the integration of smart home technology made it a good value for money i really enjoyed touring both homes because i saw things i haven't seen in a home before i always like to say this the reason for making this video is not to talk less or more about any of this country's real estate but to help you see if you'll be getting your money's worth if you choose to buy real estate in any of these countries and also give you an insider's view into the real estate market in accra and abuja and as always to compare and contrast constructively here are the criteria we'll be using to judge this debate the first would be the location and then we have the architectural design greenery the facilities and features that come to the home functionality and the use of space finishing slash the aesthetics and then the overall appreciation value of you know these homes so we'll be ranking them in points as we always do the country with the highest accumulated points would emerge the winner winner in the sense that i mean it offers more for the asking price both properties are fitted and furnished they are both two stories five bedroom fully detached homes in a gated estate they both have the latest smart home technology and the asking price for the both property is at one million dollars so that makes both properties a great fit for this comparison i would appreciate if you can subscribe to the channel and like this video for the algorithm now that being said let the debate begin criteria is uh, location now real estate is all about location and it accounts for more than 50 percent of the overall price of a home let's start with the abuja property the abuja home is located in coast Grove estate Wuye. Wuye is not among the top five prestigious neighborhoods uh, to own real estate in abuja uh, you're going to find a lot of middle income earners live here now to add to that it is not so central as you can see from the map but one great thing with abuja is the roads are smooth and really wide with minimal traffic so with a 20 minutes drive you can be at the central business district right the estate is very secure and has cctv cameras with their own private security guards entrance is restricted to only visitors with the access code while the across property is located in cantonment unlike Wuye in abuja cantonment is the most prestigious neighborhood in all of ghana you have to be really wealthy to own a home right here in cantonment the neighborhood houses embassies and high commission residents a lot of experts live here the security is really tight the estate itself has its own private security to give um, the homeowners that extra peace of mind there's a clear winner here i don't have to say much the across property is centrally located and it's in a high net worth neighborhood so one goes to accra and zero goes to abuja now going closer to the properties in this category would compare how sophisticated and visually appealing the architectural design of these buildings are i always like to say this i am not an architect so please don't judge me i might not use the right words but i would say it as it is the abuja property hmm i would say it's modern but the house design is very common i don't think the, the developers prioritized are doing themselves with the exterior architectural design in my opinion it lacks creativity this design would quickly go out of fashion going into details the developer settled for a hidden or flat roof which is standard when it rains it channels water internally into the drainage there is a total of three balconies and one lounge 
for the primary bedroom. You have an open garage by the right and a mini sit-out area by the left with a pathway to the backyard. I like how the developers used a lot of shades of grey, brown and yellow to contrast the white paint. The windows are not so big but I mean I'll give it a pass. Stepping into the property, all the rooms are in suits. The staircase and lift was separated or hidden from the main uh, living area which is really nice. The rooms are reasonably sized, there's only one kitchen and it's really small. The first floor has three rooms with a family lounge and the primary bedroom occupies the top floor. Comparing it with that of the Accra's property, uh, looking at the exterior architectural design, let me know what you think guys because a lot of people were criticizing the design saying that they can't spend that much uh, amount in a box home when I taught the property on the channel. But I think it is beautiful. It was designed in a way that all of the floor seems like it was stacked on the first floor and slightly tilted you know if you don't like it i think it's a matter of preference but i think this is great architecture this is creativity you will really find designs like this around unlike that of abuja in an interview i had with a developer he explained what exactly he was trying to achieve with this design what would you call the design of this this i'll call it afro modish afro modish yeah i was yes. actually looking for a right name for it afro modish right. so it's really taking the modern approach to African living. Yeah. And that comes with all the conveniences that you see. I always loved real estate. I was doing it in America and I thought that would be the first platform for what we would build out. And what more to add to the common real estate we see here in Africa but to make the homes smart, very unique that automation, yeah. and then make sure the design is something that you will not see. He used a flat roofing just like that of Abuja and then you have an open garage on the right and uh, in the middle of the estate. The property have five balconies and a lounge on the top floor. I'm really in love with the color combination because most developers I see around equate white paint to luxury, which is not always the case, right? I love how the developers mixed and blend colors, making it look very visually appealing. Now, stepping into the property, the space looks a little bit smaller when compared to that of Abuja. It has four bigger windows for you know better cross ventilation compared to the two medium sized window on that of the Abuja property. The first floor has an office, a family lounge with two rooms. The primary room occupies the top floor. In conclusion, the Accra's property outperformed the Abuja's home in this category with stunning architecture. All the rooms have balconies, the color combination is fantastic to mention but a few. So one point to Accra and zero to Abuja. I always like to add this category because it's essential in a home. Not only does greenery add to the overall beautification of a home, greenery absorbs that polluted air and provides freshness uh, and purity in the air which is good for your lungs and also help raise the property value. Looking at both properties, all I can say is developers in West Africa really have to step up their game in this regard. I recently got back from a trip to Rwanda and I was impressed on how East Africans prioritize green spaces in their development. Both the Accra and the Abuja property did a terrible job at allocating green areas. However, the Abuja home made a little effort as you can see. So that being said, I'll give half to Abuja and zero to Accra for doing a terrible job or integrating no green space at all. In this category, we would analyze the facilities or the features that come with this home if you decide to put aside 1 million USD to buy any of these properties. Starting with the Abuja home, it is a two-story building with five bedrooms. It has five and a half bathrooms with a staff quarters. You have two balconies and one lounge for the primary bedroom. A garage that can pack three SUVs comfortably. Nigeria doesn't have 24-7 electricity power, but the estate is almost off-grid and have their own uh, private you know, generating plant. To add to that, the house comes with uh, a solar system as well. Stepping into the property, you're welcomed by a smart door. This particular door can be accessed with a fingerprint, can be accessed with a key card and also uh, an access code and all can be done with your phone. This is the foyer and by the right is the powder room or the guest toilet as you know, you know it to be. This property has a lift to access all the floors and an alternative staircase. When I stepped in here, I felt like I was in a five-star hotel. Now, into the main living room, you have a semi-open plant space. It comes with smoke sensors, 
central cooling system, motion sensors, central speakers, smart cleaners, and light fixtures. The smart home technology helps open the curtains automatically, access the exterior camera, communicates with the main gate, and other cool feature I wish I had the time to talk about. Now you have six seaters, collapsible dining table, a kitchen with accessories by Mille, moving upstairs, which can either be accessed by a lift or the staircase. You have a spacious family lounge with motion sensors, smoke detectors, and three and suite bedroom. One of which is the main bedroom for this floor with its own private balcony, a very, very spacious bathroom with a rain head standing shower with two vanities, a smart mirror and a bathtub. Going to the last floor, you have an elevator entrance and another entrance into the outdoor lounge area. Stepping into the primary bedroom, you have an indoor lounge and a bedroom area as well. Take a second and admire the walk-in closet. This is one of the finest walk-in closet I have seen on the property. On the right hand side, you have the bathroom with a rain head standing as always, uh, a bathtub, two vanity and a smart mirror. The primary bedroom has a control room or an office. It has its own private balcony. I mean, this house is really packed with a lot of features and I love it. Comparing this with that of the Akrash property, uh, it's a two stories, five bedroom with five and a half bathroom. It comes with its own staff quarters as well. Uh, it doesn't have a garage however there's a space at the side of the property that can pack at least one suv the property comes with four balconies and an exterior lounge for the primary bedroom this estate has a swimming pool which is shared among all the house owners stepping into the property you're welcomed by this smart keyless door opening the door you have the dining on the left and the main living room on your right the abuja home is powered with google while this is powered with uh, alexa Alexa, turn on living room light. Alright, uh, you have central cooling system, smoke detectors and no motion sensor. The property comes with well-equipped wet and dry kitchen. Going up to the first floor, you have a family lounge and three rooms, but the third room was converted to an office space. All the rooms are pretty much of the same size and smaller when compared to that of Abuja. Going to the last floor, this walkway leads you into the primary bedroom. On the left, you have the bathroom, which have smart mirrors, jacuzzi, and a rain head uh, standing shower. The second left, you have the walk-in closet with backlighting. The Abuja home, I think, has a bigger closet. Going forward, you'd have the main bedroom that has a bed, a space for your TV, and all of those things, right? Now, stepping outside, you have a larger outdoor balcony or lounge for the primary bedroom. In conclusion, both homes come with almost similar features with you know one or two things missing here and there but the abuja home offered more features with even bigger spaces when compared to that of accra so i'm going to give one point to abuja and um yeah i'll just give the half point to accra In this category, would analyze how functional these properties are for everyday living and how well both developers were able to maximize the space they had to build on. Starting with the Abuja property, the developers were thoughtful enough to leave enough space around the property for easy movement. The backyard was used to store the solar system and condenser for the central cooling system and it also has the entrance into the staff quarters and the kitchen as well. This home has a lift and a staircase for easy access into all of the floors. It has a foyer which is great for you know welcoming your guests before you let them into your home. Also at the entrance you have an alternative door leading into the kitchen which is a great feature because your staff don't always have to pass through the living room to get to the kitchen. The central cooling system and speakers, smoke, smoke detectors, uh, motion sensors, all of these features make uh, a home very functional and safe for everyday living. The dining table can be collapsible which can come in handy. This property has only one kitchen. A property of this caliber should have at least two. The kitchen has two exit doors, one to the foyer and one to the backyard. The rooms have two windows for cross ventilation. You have uh, a Google tab that can still perform the automation and you can communicate with all the floors. Now heading to the third floor, entrance into the lounge can be accessed by the owner's visitors without necessarily entering the main living room and has a door leading to the control room or office. This is awesome functionality. The lounge opens up into the bedroom and the open closet. 
I like this because it makes the room appear bigger in size. The bathroom still has the smart feature which is excellent, the rain head shower comes in handy for taller people and the alternative bathtub as well. Comparing this to that of Accra, the arrangement of the houses doesn't sit right with me. I, I understand the developer was trying to manage space. Uh, parking here is going to be a problem if each homeowner has up to three cars. The property has a flat roof and on top of it, it was used to store the condenser for the cooling system and the solar, which is a great use of space. Stepping to the property, it opens up into the dining and the kitchen, which is not really functional because you just open the door and you just have you know, your dining in front of you. The only thing on this first floor that beats that of Abuja is the dry and wet kitchen, which can come very handy for cooking different type of meals. The rooms are smaller when compared to that of the Abuja property. All the rooms have balconies, which is awesome, but the closet is really small for a property of such price points. The bathrooms are smaller, just uh, with a standing shower and the vanity. On the last floor, there are two doors leading to the open balcony, one for the owner and one for his visitors. The lounge space is four times bigger than that of the Abuja's own. The arrangement of the walk-in closet and the bathroom is a bit off for me. In conclusion, the Abuja property is a clear winner for this category because it is functional and the space was more utilized than that of the Accra property. The Accra home beats that of the Abuja with just the two kitchen setup and the placement of the equipment on the flat roof. So zero point to that of Accra and one to Abuja. In this category, we would analyze how aesthetically appealing the finishing of these homes are. I'll play a 30 second clip of both properties for you to judge for yourself. Concluding this category, the Abuja property did a better job with the finishing and general aesthetics. Right from the wardrobe fitting, the light fixtures, the thick curtains, choice of interior paints, and the usage of rocks in the rooms instead of tiles. So one point goes to Abuja's home and zero point goes to Accra. Um, this is something to talk about, especially if you want to you know, get a property in any of these countries for the sake of investment. Purchasing a land in Cantonment Accra is way more expensive when compared to that of Wuye Abuja. So if you buy a property in Cantonment, you can be rest assured that this property would appreciate annually because of the influx of foreigners in need of housing in that neighborhood and are willing to pay the price to stay close to the embassies. While Wuye Abuja is not an upmarket location, it will take you years for the property to appreciate by even one third its price. So in conclusion, Accra has one and Abuja has zero. After looking at all the criteria and trying to justify the asking price of $1 million for both properties in Accra, Ghana and Abuja, Nigeria, it is fair to say that the Abuja home by Coast Group Limited offered more for the asking price. But over to you, I'd like to hear from you guys. So if you had $1 million US dollars to buy a home in Accra or Abuja, which of these homes would you buy? Let's take that conversation over to the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching this video to the very end. And please and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like if you liked it. Until the next video, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.